All right. I always do like a big chug right before we start. Oh, yeah. Do you? And then just ease oh, because you it. have to do the whole welcome. Uh, oh, that's I also said I wasn't going to drink this November, so. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. I said I was taking off a month because I drink for three weeks straight, like every single day. So. It's football season. That's the reason. That's, I the, drink. that's the reason. <laughs> it's not even an excuse, it's the reason. Do I put my drink over here? I, I always do it on this side, just, but that would be your right hand. I'm ambidextrous when it comes to drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I have no limits. None. Whichever hand you tell me, this I've got This is going to turn into a podcast about drinking. <laughs> we'll get some good stuff out of it. Yeah, no we have to. I feel like the bloopers of this video are going to be insane. Oh, they're going to be fun. Bloopers in three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Brandy? Welcome to the Better Half Podcast. I'm super excited to have you on the show. Um, we've known each other the past few years that I've yep. been here. You've been here a minute. Yeah, good minute. <laughs> so I'm excited to talk to you about some things that I feel like I don't really know that much about, like raising a kid in the NFL because your son is nine, like you said. Yeah. And I don't know, just talk about kind of your experience in the NFL, um, but more importantly, you and how you've pursued your career and all your ambitions and things like that. All so right. why don't you start off by introducing yourself and how you met your, well, and who your significant other is, <laughs> because I feel like they would want to know that. Yeah. Like who is this random chick on the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, hello guys. My name is Brandy Square. I am wife of Damien Square. Nose tackle number 71 for the good old Chargers. Um, and we have been with the Chargers for seven years now. This is year eight for us. That. <laughs> I'm going to give a round of applause. Right? Yes, seven years. It's been a long time. That's insane. And so you guys have been together since college, right? Yes, since uh, 2008. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Crazy. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. tell us how you guys met, how you fell in love. Okay. Well, um, I actually have a cousin that plays for the Cardinals, and um, he introduced us in college. He was actually a high school um, prospect. Okay. There you go. He was a high school prospect, and I was trying to check out um, the recruiting process because I wanted to be what we call a Bama Bell. I have no idea what that is. Right. So, <laughs> as you know, Alabama is a really big football state. That's like, all I know. I mean, being from Michigan, that's all I know yeah, about Alabama yeah, is, like, I, yeah. football. We, no other professional team could ever survive. We tried, like, arena ball and all this other stuff. Nothing mm -hmm. ever worked out. Yeah. It's all college ball. Well, so, I mean, how many times has Alabama gone to the championship? When we were in college, it was three times. And we won all three times. We <laughs> Quick side note, I went to Michigan State. We played Alabama in the championship. Ooh, I and remember we, that game. We did not get one touchdown. I was pregnant during that game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to how y'all met. <laughs> so we met. Um, my cousin takes me to camp with him. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's just kind of giving me the runaround. And I'm from Birmingham, which was 45 minutes from Tuscaloosa. Right. I... Um, see some of my friends and I'm like hey y'all I'm having a party later tonight because like I said I already have my friends there <laughs> and we have a party later that night and I see Damien and he's dancing nobody else is dancing <laughs> what else do you expect right? right and I was like whoa 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 time out who is this I had to ask him I was like who is this and they go that's square and I was like but like what's his real name <laughs> like, no, that's, that's no for real like y'all call him square and they were like, no, his name is Damien Square. So I was like, all right. I had to think about it for a second. Right. So I introduced myself with a plate of food because I'm a good old Southern male. <laughs> Hi, you're really cute. Do you want... Would you food? like some Rotel dip? I have nachos. I have nachos <laughs> and I have wings. Take your pick. <laughs> like literally the best way to introduce yourself yeah. to a guy. Yeah. My dad always told me the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So day one, boom, I'm Brandy. Here's your food. <gasps> oh my God. That's great. You need me in your life. <laughs> and I feel like it's like knowing him. Well, also I didn't know his first name was Damien until now. Really? Because I just know him as Square. <laughs> but I feel like what a way to meet him other than he was dancing. Yeah. And then you show up with a plate of food. Yeah. Which he's is a just clown. like. 
you are just like the people person. You're like, I yeah. know exactly how to get this done. So we were always like the life of the party. And, you know, we like we introduced ourselves and it was like a whole bunch of the team there and all that crap. Right. And we would always end up being at parties together. Mm -hmm. I would be like in the middle of the dance floor doing my thing. And he just like pop up behind me. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And we, it would just be like a party you're all like, night long. We are soulmates. Right. We are soulmates. We would dance like all night parties, nothing. Just so you guys met what year of college? The first day of freshman year. <laughs> so y'all were like babies. We were babies. We were 18 and 19 years old. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you guys instantly fell in love. I mean. Instantly. Once you offered that plate of food and you saw his dance moves, you're like. It was actually, we were more like friends first. Really? We were really like friends. You know, like some of my other homegirls wanted them like, huh, yeah, that's cute. Don't try it though. <laughs> but that was my friend. Like if whenever I had a problem, I would talk to him and we just had a really good relationship. And I feel like the best relationships, like the best, the best, yeah, the best relationships turn, like turn from friendships right. into like, oh, well, I'm going to marry my best friend now. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what it was. And then, um, we were just like inseparable because I did end up doing like the recruiting process. Mm hmm we always had different guys coming in. So guys that are in the NFL now, mm -hmm. I watched them grow up as babies, like 16, 17, 18 years old. They were my recruits That's trying to come to Alabama. Mm -hmm. So like DJ Fluker, you know, he used to yeah. be with the Chargers. He's now with Baltimore. But like, that was one of my recruits. So <laughs> you were like, well, was he jealous? When he saw you like hanging out with these guys, was he like, no. Really? No. I thought, he would, I thought he would be like, oh, like, she's, like, yeah, she's my friend, but, like, I don't know. I, kinda... I mean, but it was nothing like that. It was just the coaches knew the right people yeah. to start the party. You know, like, you know how certain people just always know where the party is? I don't know where the party is. You don't know where the party is? Girl, I still know where the party is. <laughs> I will create I'm the always, party. I don't go to the party. <laughs> I have a face mask on at 8 p.m. I literally just created a party. Can I be invited to the party? Please, come to the party, girl. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like that. It was Brandy's like a people person. Mm -hmm. And we would like, they would all take them to really nice restaurants and things right. like that. So I would be there during that process, you know, yeah. just, it was almost really like, you got to have a pretty girl in your arm type of thing. Yeah. So we would do that. And then afterwards they would have the guys come and finish the night with them, you know, for the recruiting. And it was always, the coaches always paired us two up together because mm -hmm. they um, just knew, like, they're like, yeah, Brandy and Damien, they can, time. they're the good ones, right? Right. And that was our thing. Like, even when we tried not to talk to each other. It just kind of happened. Always ended up right back in each other's faces. So when did it transition from being just friends to like. Right. Um, <laughs> let's see. Hmm. <laughs> It's so long ago at this point. Um, it was probably, let's see, 2010. So our junior year. Okay. Our sophomore junior year. Oh, so y'all yeah. really built like a good friendship basis. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like also like you guys were able to like experience college, like mm -hmm. friends, kind yeah. of had that college experience. Mm -hmm. And then like, oh. He was like my DD, you know, like, hey, I'm too messed up on the strip. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not doing anything. <laughs> Can you come and pick me up? Because he only lets loose like that when he's around, like, people he's comfortable with. Right, okay. Other than that, he's just, like, sitting in the corner, you know? <gasps> okay, so it flourishes into a relationship. Yes, and then we become parents. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so when did you get pregnant? I got pregnant in 2010. <laughs> I had my son in 2011. You guys were like, I've been liking you for the past two years. Yeah. And now we're parents. And now we're parents. Mm -hmm. And we were like, um, all right, so what do we do? So was that, like, hard for you? Was that difficult? It wasn't hard. No, I've been babysitting, like, my whole life. Yeah. You know, so, you were like, so uh -huh. once you've been around kids, you know what to do, right? Right. But the hard part was juggling school, parenthood, and football. Because, I mean, you're at Alabama, right? Like, Girls are getting pregnant left and right. That's, right. You know, that's well, what actually, they do. Well, actually, I have no idea. Well, okay. <laughs> Alabama prepared me for the NFL. Okay. Because Alabama is just a whole nother beast. I feel like it is a whole nother beast. I at least know that much. Like, yeah. Alabama, when you think of a football, a college football school, you're like, 
Alabama, SEC, mm-hmm. Clemson, mm-hmm. SEC, some ACC, and that's really part of the SEC. You know what I'm saying? Like, Big Ten, Big Ten. Sorry, Where you guys. At? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So Alabama and like Saban's strict schedule, like mm-hmm. it prepared us for the NFL. So being without him, right, wasn't that hard. Like his parents and his grandparents would come in town, and mm-hmm. we would have to have Thanksgiving, like start Thanksgiving without him. It's like nothing has changed now. Nothing has changed. You know? Yeah. So now it's just like, all right, um, how many people are coming over? Well, not this year because, you know, yeah, you're COVID like- and all that. But usually it's like a flock of guys and their girls at our house and we're just having a big feast. Right. Yeah. And honestly, it's like the girls in the morning like, okay, so like we're going to come over. And then it's just like waiting around for them to get out of practice. Yep. I don't think Isaac and I have spent one Thanksgiving together, like, the full day. Really? No. I can't say we have either. I do know, like, we've spent Christmas together, but Christmas, yeah. I feel like, is a little bit different. Christmas I feel like is a little different. Thanksgiving, it's like, oh, we have to, like, lift in the morning or, like, go and do something. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'll see you later. But they're still not home until, like, 3 o'clock, you know? So, in that it's case, you just do lifestyle. your prepping beforehand, you know? And right. And you're dealing with the kids. But, yeah, that's that. So... I mean, Alabama prepared you guys for that. Uh huh. So, the draft process. Oh God. <laughs> obviously, you knew like, okay, he's going somewhere. Uh huh. So at this point, were you guys married yet? Yes. Yes. So we got married and graduated on the same day. <gasps> Wait, I think I saw a picture of that. Yeah. Can we insert the picture? That was please? like my um yeah, okay. my anniversary post. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I yeah, didn't see that on that Instagram. Was, that was what that was. Okay, so you guys got married and graduated in the same mm-hmm. day, and your parents, and you're like, oh my gosh, another curveball. He's going to the NFL. Well, yes. not really a curveball, but another thing to add on top of like what we already have going on. Yeah. So he he tore his ACL, MCL, and lateral meniscus, like our sophomore year. I don't even know what all three of those. It's all that stuff in the knee. So it's like basically just ripped his knee apart. He ripped his knee apart. Like no contact, just chasing the tight end, just falls down. Like, oh, he's going to get back up. And I see the cart and I'm like, oh, shit. When you see the cart. When you see the cart, you know it's real. Right? Luckily, luckily, we haven't had those issues since. Knock on Knock on my head, right? <laughs> but we've been good. So our chances of being drafted, we didn't know. So we actually stayed in school. Well, he stayed in school an extra year mm-hmm. to up his draft chances. Up the draft chances and get your degree. And get, well, we already graduated. So oh, I've so graduated. Was he going for his master's? He was just there. He was just, just playing football. Oh, taking so he a few was just classes. Taking classes. Yeah, just taking a few classes. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Just, yeah, basket weaving, I'll take whatever art. I need to do. I don't know. Like, I'll just try out. <laughs> no, but really, he started doing um, business classes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, well, I'm not going to let it all go to waste. Right. So he started taking business classes. Mm-hmm. He's still playing football. And he's still playing football. And then, so this would be his fifth year, right? This is his fifth year. Okay. Yeah. And so did it become more of like a, okay, he's definitely going to the NFL this mm-hmm. year? Like, he's recovered. He's yep. good. Yep. Okay. That's what that was. Yeah. So. We're in Houston getting ready for the draft, and they're like, okay, you're at least fifth round. Right. Go to the first day, and you're just, you can't sleep, you know? You can't sleep that first night of draft because you're like, okay, first day, everyone got picked. Cool, great, but we're going tomorrow. And you're just wondering where you're packing your stuff up and where you're moving to, right? 100%. So second day goes by, nothing. The phone's ringing. And people were saying, like, oh, I want to get you. I'll put you, you on the, uh, oh, you're, if you go as a, uh-huh. like, undrafted, I'll pick you guys up. Yeah. And it's ringing like that. And you're like, like can that. you please not call my phone until please after not. the draft Right. Is done. Exactly. So that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. So we were, like, in three different locations, like, every day. We were this place, this place, this place. So day three, draft's over, and we're looking at each other like, okay. I did not know he went undrafted. Yeah, he was undrafted. He was undrafted. And what year in the NFL is this? Eight. Right? Blessings, right? Bold Where's my blessed. big Sean when I need it? Yeah, you're like, thank you. <laughs> so we go undrafted, and he ends up picking Philly. Mm-hmm. That's our first team, and I know nothing about Philly. But I'm like, if you want to go, let's let's do this, you know? So are you, as an undrafted free agent, an undra- is that what it's called? Yeah, it's undrafted, undrafted free, free agent. agent. Whatever, undrafted. Are you able to choose where you go? Yeah, we were. So initially it was going to be the 49ers in he looked at the depth charts, and one of our one of his other D linemen had actually gotten drafted there. Okay. And he was like, okay, we could, you know, be the dynamic duo, work this thing out. Right. But actually, our old O-line coach was the O-line coach at Philly now. So. 
had a so little combo. So he did his research. Like he was like, I'm. Yeah, like I he was did his due diligence for here. sure. Yeah, and he wow. was just like, they say I got a chance against their O line, then I'm gonna go. That's that's what I'm gonna do. Right. And Philly was the best experience of like I couldn't have had a better rookie season. That's amazing. It was awesome. It was awesome. And I would assume that Philly is a lot different from the Chargers. Very different. Especially, yes. well, but you were here for the transition, which I, we'll I talk. Was. We'll talk more yeah, about because I'm very curious about that. Uh-huh. But so you guys went to Philly, and how old was your son when you guys moved? Two, one, two. Okay, he, he's nine now. Yeah, like one. <laughs> You're like how old? Were right? You? I don't yeah, know. he so he was like one, two years old. Okay. Yeah. And so, how was that? That was cool. You know, that's what I call the arm, the Mm -hmm. arm baby phase. Yeah. You just pack them up and go, you know, nothing to it. Well, I feel like once, once you're like, okay, I went through the newborn phase, like Mm -hmm. I'm taking him out. He's like starting to like look around and like start talking and stuff like that. You're like, okay, this is fun. Like, yeah. When you have cute kids, (laughs) do you know what comes with cute kids? If you have an ugly baby, don't listen. (laughs) A lot of attention comes with cute kids. Oh, my But think about it. Like, he grew up in in Tuscaloosa. So, we were already going to tailgates. Like, we were already doing, like, all of that. He was two, and he was like, all right, what tailgate are we going to next? He was one, and he was – I have pictures. It's so cute. He's walking up to random people like, hey, so what you doing here, you know? Like, he always (laughs) just owned the place, and he's always just been a football fanatic. That I mean, I, I feel so, like it would though, right? be so cool to watch your dad be in the NFL and like going to school. Like, that's my dad. Oh baby, like, the whole daycare knew the Eagles fight song, <laughs> <laughs> and he would wear his little wristbands to school because oh. he wanted everyone to know. Like, yeah, I'm important. My dad plays. Like, that's my daddy. <laughs> that's my daddy. Like, hello. <laughs> So you guys stay at, in Philadelphia for how long? We were there for a full season, and we were the very last cut of camp that next year. Hate to be there. Yeah. But mm-hmm. looking in hindsight, you're like, well, we're in L.A. right, right. now. So how long after you guys got – or after he got cut that you guys ended up coming out here? Okay. So we get cut, and we go to the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a curveball. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, we went to the Chiefs. Like, yeah. And that is the most grueling and daunting weekend of your life. Cut weekend, horrible. Especially when you have, like, a kid. So, luckily, we had great friends, and they were right. having, like, little birthday parties and stuff to keep our mind off of it. Right. But as we're, like, stressing, we're at these people's houses, and I don't know what our next move is going to be. So he's talking to his agent and, you know, coaches are calling or GMs and they're doing their little tango. And then keep in mind, I haven't packed a thing because I'm like, okay, well, you know, at least we'll get picked up practice squad. Yeah. No, you're going to Kansas City. Gets that call. He has to leave. Mind you, in Alabama, we were in a two bedroom apartment. We go from a two bedroom apartment to a three story townhouse. And I have to pack that thing up and get out of Dodge. Like, go. Oh my, I cannot even imagine. Yeah, it's very stressful. Okay, so y'all are in Can- Kansas City. Kansas I have City. never known this information. Yes. I did know you went to the you guys went to the Eagles. Uh-huh. But I did not you guys went to Kansas. So yeah. how long were you guys in Kansas? Two months. Okay. <laughs> we so, got cut on my birthday. We had people in town. They were ready for the game. We got them jerseys made. You know, the walkthrough the day before. They were like, hey, need to talk to you. We're going to cut you. Because that was the year Eric Berry found out he had cancer. Okay. So they had to take someone from active roster off and move someone up from practice squad to active roster. So was he going to go on practice squad? They completely cut him. They wanted him to, though. They said, don't go anywhere. Don't call. Right. You know, if you get a call, let us know. Mm-hmm. But we hated Kansas City. We're, so you guys were like, mm. Yeah, no. Because I I know, for the, all the listeners that don't know, when you get cut, you have to get cut for 24 hours uh-huh. before they can bring you, you back. You do. So for that 24 hours, any team can call you. Any team can call. There's so many rules of the NFL. Like, if you're on practice squad and another team calls, like, you can go, but you have to be on their active roster. Like, yeah. so many rules. It's really, really crazy. I don't even know how to keep up most of the time. 
I don't. I don't keep up. <laughs> Sorry, so, Isaac. <laughs> we get the call from the Chargers. Okay. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. Duh. Like, San Diego? Live in, Can- live in California? You're like from Philadelphia to Kansas right. City. Well, Sorry, what's Missouri. crazy about that was we came out to San Diego a few months before because we did POA. Oh, you know, the players and POA outreach. was, okay. Yeah, and the PO that year was in San Diego. And we were like, man, how cool would it be if we lived here? A few months later, we're living there. Y'all manifested we that. We manifested that. Yeah. Right? So you guys end up coming to San Diego. We come to San Diego during their bye week. Okay. So I just unpacked my last box and I have to go to San Diego, find us an apartment, come back. Luckily, he helped me move that time because Chargers were in bye week. So he was, right. You were like, you are packing. You're box. packing. So we which pack everybody, I'm, I don't know if people think that like the NFL players get somebody to pack stuff up for them, but like no. you, you have to coordinate all that. Yourself. Oh, baby, you gotta have like, money for that. Yeah, <laughs> like, you like, gotta have real money for that. Especially if someone's like packing your house from top to bottom. Yeah. Like, yeah. Think about it. We're undrafted at that point, so that contract is just going over to the next team. That was a three-year deal, right? So we're still rookie contract. Okay. And moving that many times. I did not know that when you got picked up by another team. Again, See, luckily the rules you of the don't NFL. have to. You haven't had to experience that. Hopefully, you won't have to. Hopefully, you won't have to. <laughs> we'll see. I think it's a free agent after this. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay, so you guys go to the Chargers mm-hmm. in San Diego. In San Diego. I want to know selfishly. I don't even care about what the listeners are care about. I want to know selfishly what San Diego was like. Oh my god. San Diego was amazing. Like oh man. I have so many memories. So many good memories mm-hmm. of San Diego. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely a smaller town than it is. like Orange County. It which is. If people don't know that the Chargers are technically the LA Chargers but we are in Orange County. Yeah. Whereas I feel like San Diego is definitely like a smaller town vibe. It's mm-hmm. not a small town. No. But it's a different feeling. Yeah. So basically, Qualcomm is right there off of like Friars Road. Right? I've been to Qualcomm once. It was when Notre Dame, Isaac's college, uh-huh. played Navy. So we went. Okay. And okay. we were on the field and I was like, this is a cool stadium. It was. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have any AC. So being pregnant there was not fun. Oh. Yeah. But we lived like literally in walking distance of the stadium so we could literally get all the girls together we would walk down to the stadium have our tacos and we tailgate and then you know tailgating was all around the stadium so we had player parking but you could walk right outside that gate the stadium is just surrounded by like nothing but tailgates and they're there because the game is at one Mm -hmm. they get there at 10 o'clock and they're partying from 10 until four or five o'clock when the game is over right and it was amazing. Absolutely oh amazing. So we did that and we would go back and forth. We would go back and forth between Houston and San Diego because our son was getting older, right? Right, okay. And we wanted to make sure he was still around most of his family because mm-hmm. Damien's from Houston. So every fall we would be in San Diego and every spring we would be in Houston. Wow. Yeah. A traveling family. A traveling family. <gasps> okay, so you guys now stay in California full time. Yes. Correct? Okay. Yes, because I'm tired of all of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I do know there are families that go back and forth there during are. the off season. There and are. There, in fact, there are some guys who have, like, they're like, my, well, my kids are older. I'm not taking them out of school yeah. every fall. Like, they're going to stay there and I'll come back uh-huh. when I can. Oh, my gosh. It's, and I've, I mean, I'm just like, a little youngin, like I just got engaged, right? but the idea of raising kids in the NFL, it's not like, oh, like we can just up and move whenever. You you have to like be conscientious of like, oh, this is my kid's decision. Absolutely. But you have to remember, like, the kids aren't happy. Like they aren't as happy when dad's not around, right? Exactly. So any living situation you can name, we've done it. Like Damien has lived with roommates. Like he was on practice squad when I was pregnant. So Year two with the Chargers, Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. Well, for camp, I'm pregnant. I'm like six months pregnant. No, seven months pregnant. And there's like very pregnant. Yeah, (laughs) really pregnant. And there's three of us pregnant at the same time. All D linemen. It was so funny. All girls and all D linemen. (laughs) 
perfect. <laughs> right. It was. We were like, okay, play Get dates. Little, let's like, do this. We got like, it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he gets cut, and they put him on practice squad. Well, we already have a house in Houston, and I'm like, I have a four-year-old, and I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. I have to go back home yeah. because things are uncertain here right now. So yeah. he did that whole season with roommates. And that was like the first time he's had roommates in his adult life. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, you got a roommate? Yeah. So it was like four of them in, a, in an apartment and they would get traded and picked up and everything. And Damien oh. was the last one standing. So like, I have no roommates. Come back. <laughs> Nobody came back. <laughs> but the cool thing about him being on practice squad was he got to come home on the weekends when there were away games. Oh, okay. So that was So he was would fun. fly to Houston. He would fly to Houston on the weekends and be with us. Wow. Right. So one weekend, it was actually, yeah, five years ago. Halloween weekend, they were playing Baltimore. Mm-hmm. They fly him to Baltimore, and then they're like, I don't think we're going to need you after all. So they flew him home to Houston, and I gave birth then. I had a planned preg- like a planned delivery. I had a C-section. He stayed home for like four days. Oh my gosh! Yeah, day three because my my birthday is two days after Halloween. So November second, we celebrate my birthday. My best friend surprises me that night. Like I'm getting ready, like anxiety attack, about to have another kid. And Carson's my best friend come comes in. She drives in from Arizona because she's moving to Dallas. So she drives past Dallas and comes to Houston. And she spends, like, the night with me, right? Yeah, you're like, at least I have somebody. Yeah, at least I have somebody. Right. But I wake up the next morning, and I have Carson. Mm-hmm. They're rolling us to the room where we're going to spend a few days. He gets the call, hey, we're moving you up to active roster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, um, can I have a phone? Um, hi, we're going to have to wait because I just had a child. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no. No, no, no. I was, like, I was still, like, drugged up and everything. And I was like, wait, did you, did you just sign your contract in the hospital room? <laughs> did he? <laughs> he did. Oh he God. had to find, like, a computer and a printer. And they sent over the contract. And he signed it in the hospital room. What? <laughs> yeah. I feel like that has to been like, be, like, one of the craziest, like, oh, I'm signing my contract right here, yeah. right now. You just had this baby. I just got moved up. Okay. Yeah. And the crazy thing about that was I didn't tell anyone, but it was on Twitter. You know, one of those. It's like, you're like, just kind of scrolling. You're like. Yeah. And they had her whole name and everything. And I hadn't told anyone. So I was like, what, what, what is this? You're it like, was really weird. It's one of the nurses. One of the, the things, <laughs> the mysteries of being associated with the NFL. <laughs> you're just like. Uh, the craziest part of it being associated with the NFL is when you find out information about your man or somebody else mm-hmm. on Twitter before you're like, yes, even in the know. Yep. I've and had friends like, that got traded like that and they found out on Twitter. I have heard a story about that. Yeah. Where that has happened. Yep. And it's interesting, right? Crazy. Yeah. So that experience part taught me style, I guess. if your kids ever go to the hospital, use an alias. And you can do that. This is Jonna Smith. <laughs> so we had like a whole cold name. Like my son, he had an asthma attack a few years ago and mm-hmm. he ended up in the hospital for a few days. And we, I was telling them the story and he was like, you know, you can use the alias, right? Like you don't have to use your real name. So no one will know you guys are here. So keep that in mind, you know, Interesting. back pocket. Interesting. Yeah. Put in that back back. Okay. So now we have two kids. Okay, so now you have two kids, and Uh he's on the active roster. Did he ever get cut down to the practice squad again? No. So he's been on the active roster? We've been active roster consistently for the last five years. Prayers? Yes. Up to that. That rookie contract was rough. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac got cut, but then he nobody picked him up, so he was like, oh, now I'm on the Chargers. Oh, cut. Oh, okay. It's like a roller coaster ride. Yeah, it is. Okay, so the past five years have been a little bit of smooth sailing. Uh Sailing. Yeah. So throughout all of that, you were super consistent. You're like, this is my husband. Mm -hmm. These are our kids. You do whatever you can to make it work. Yeah. So once, so how long were you guys in San Diego for? Two years. Three years. Two, three years. Okay. Okay. Everything's run together at this point. Did you guys ever buy buy a house in San Diego? No. Okay. So when we were in San Diego that first year, we ended up buying our house in Houston. Because I was like, I'm tired of moving. 
It's like a little home base. Yeah, it was our little home base. So mm-hmm. we could send like all his jerseys and balls. And yeah. Our literally our home base became our vacation home because when we moved to Orange County, schools are better. Life is a little, you know, more stable and it's not right. party attracting the party life <laughs> that we were so accustomed to. <laughs> so it was like, okay, this can be a good change. Let's mm-hmm. let's stay here. Yeah. And by that time, our son was in first grade. Yeah. Growing up in the, with a father that's in the NFL. Literally in the NFL. Oh, my. That was hard when he was coming up, though, because he's like, oh, my daddy plays football at the park. And I'm like, dude, no. You You're like, this is not the time. Stranger danger. Yeah, I, I taught you that, right? <laughs> he's about to steal you and ask for ransom. Right. Yeah. So- Right. No, so no, that no. was hard when he was younger, but as he got older and we were like in a safer community, right. you know, things began to change. Now that's like his ticket. You know, he's already a cool kid, but he's like, I'm not invited to the birthday party. Hold on. Watch this. My dad will give you an mm-hmm. autograph ball. Right. <laughs> My dad can come to the school and speak if you need him to. <laughs> right. It was all of that. So it was right. actually a lot of fun. So from there, um, we started having like little fundraisers and we did our like annual block party. Like mm-hmm. we actually made Orange County our home. Right. And we've been here ever since. And that's when you start to like meet neighbors and yeah. like start actually like developing roots. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the best parts about being like with a team for so long mm-hmm. is that you can actually like start making friends that are outside the NFL. Well, NFL friends are amazing but it's nice to have somebody outside the nfl that you're like oh like what do you want to do this weekend like no totally whereas in like you see the other people like five days a week and you're like uh yeah kind of tired of i now. would always tell like my friends no matter if they were in the nfl or not i'm like you need your set of normal friends mm-hmm. and then you need your nfl friends because you're gonna have problems that happen in this life that your normal friends can't even comprehend right and it's not really even that crazy but still just to say your problem it's like and you're complaining because right you know and I feel like we could talk about that literally for hours because (laughs) I mean the smallest complaints like oh like oh today is that one day where they make all the cuts and Mm -hmm. everyone's like oh he's fine like don't worry about it but then other people that have been through that process are like okay, best of luck to you guys. Like, we're going to be sitting here waiting. Like, right. we'll keep in touch, make sure everything's good, right. whatever. Nobody really knows, like, the heaviness of that mm-hmm. day other than people who are in it. Right. And then other things like, oh, my husband's about to go to camp for a month. Right. I'm all alone. Yeah. People don't really understand that either. Exactly. But then you, I feel like you also kind of want friends to step away from it. Yeah, you do. Like, I got to a point where I wasn't so consumed with his career Right. And I was more like, okay, that's his, that's his job. Like, that's his own identity. You right. know, I'm a mom over here. I always say I have to keep one foot in his world and one foot in the real world. You know, I never want anyone's head to blow up and get too big. And right. <laughs> us not be able to uh, adjust to life after retirement. I never right. want anything like that. So I always try to make sure to keep a good balance between the two worlds, if you will. I mean, that's amazing that you even said that because I feel like I saw that like the first like two years Isaac was in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is amazing. Oh, my God. NFL life. This is sick. Oh, my God. Whatever. And then I feel like I kind of came down and I was like, this is just your job. Yeah. We're going to live normally. Once you're done with the NFL, we're going to have other dreams aspirations Mm -hmm. you're gonna do more things after the nfl right obviously we're gonna you're gonna want to stay and follow your dream as long as you can but there's eventually going to be a point where you're like i'm not exactly i mean people don't understand nfl stands for what not for long oh my god i've heard that right and it's true you know so you get this lump sum of money at 22 23 years old and you just go crazy and you know you don't realize that once the season stops you're not getting paid and once camp starts, you're barely getting paid. It's like $500. <laughs> you know? You're wow. waiting for the season to start again. So cut that out if it's not accurate. Sorry. Or cut it out if it can't Compared start. to their normal paychecks. Yeah. It's, it's okay. not. It's like a debt. Teacher. Yeah. Obviously a lot well, more we're money. We're not going to say that. <laughs> but I meant, like, I meant like the payment schedule. Yeah. Obviously. But with that being said, if yeah. you're used to the simpler things in life and you're used to just taking it one day at a time. Right adjusting isn't that big of a deal it's harder for people that get caught up in the hype 
you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, and I'm we're sure in we... the NFL. We got all this money. And it's like, dude, you do realize you need to save that, right? Mm-hmm. You know? So once you get grasped that concept, and it takes people a while, you know? Like right. I said, they're 22 and 23 years old. And they were just given this check, and you're like, oh, yeah. my God, this is amazing. All I got to do is play football, and I get paid. Right. And I can, you know, go buy me some Gucci and Balenciagas. And I'm like, dude, no. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. But then you have, like, people, people pulling on you. you no know, family. Like, I got problems. You know, mm-hmm. you got all that, too. But you just have to stay grounded, essentially. Right. Just stay grounded and try not to. You never want to live paycheck to paycheck. That's mm-hmm. what we say. Right. Take your savings. Take that check and throw it all in savings and get you a little bit that you need. And just ride that wave, man. It's interesting you say that because Isaac has financial advisor, uh-huh. which I feel like I would recommend to anybody, anybody. in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like they would be the voice of reason if you're single. But it's also hard to find a good one because you don't know who to trust. I, see, I did, Isaac got his financial advisor from one of his friends back home. Okay. And he, I guess, had been working with a bunch of, like, bigger name guys. And he's like, I usually wouldn't sign somebody like this or blah, 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 whatever. But I'll be the it, exception. That's cool. And I'm like, okay. But his financial advisor is, like, so sweet down earth. But he was saying to Isaac when he first got in the NFL, like, you have to look at the NFL as your, your paycheck that you get for this year, divide that by a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And so until you get to where you can live comfortably for the rest of your life on what is in your savings and what is coming to you. Exactly. You can't overspend. Like, you have to no. keep your head down. Keep your head down. You can't let it. Don't look at that flashy car over there. Don't look at that jumpsuit over there. Right. Don't look at that ring or those shoes. I mean, like, treat yourself every now look and then. Look at the engagement ring, though. You got to do that. I mean, yeah, look, at, <laughs> look at the ring for the lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> the one that's true to your heart. Mm-hmm. You know, not the one that's addicted to the life. So you, you kept, I mean, I know, I know you, I know your family, y'all are super down to earth. Like you you guys haven't let the NFL like life get to you or like, I don't know. I feel like live beyond your Mm means, not even beyond your means, but just you guys have lived humbly, humble beginnings. I know I'm blessed, but like we're living just like normal. So you Uh have started your own company. I have. And so you have your, obviously you have been such a I don't even know what to call it like such a big aspect in I'm gonna call him square because I can't call him TV sure (laughs) but you've been you've been such a big aspect in his life like while everything was changing okay we're changing team to team to team okay now we're stable and you're like okay well now that we're stable I'm gonna follow my own dream I'm Mm -hmm. gonna start my own stuff because I mean obviously I know square he's like I love this woman I want her to follow her dreams too so tell us a little bit about how you've followed your dreams okay so, I already know that you followed your dreams. I mean, yeah, you were on my website. <laughs> She's on my website, guys. <laughs> go, and ch- go and check it out. It is. Vibekate.com. Like <laughs> With the Y. <laughs> so I started my company. It's called Vibe Kit. You know, um, a lot of my friends, they always come to me when they're going through things. We don't mm-hmm. necessarily talk about it. Right. It's just like... I need that. I need your hospitality. I need you to cook me something. I need you to make me some warm tea. I didn't know this. I'll come to you. Yeah, next time. like I'm like a spiritual healer in a sense. If I could do it for myself, that would be great. <laughs> but for like, other people, for, yeah, right? but you, you know, it's taking person. that advice and you can't take your own that type of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. that's me. But mm-hmm. I do like my friends every year. Like they just kind of come to me, mm-hmm. and it's always dang I feel like so refreshed and rejuvenated after this weekend with you and I was like okay I think y'all might be on to something you know your entrepreneur brain was like so I'm trying to turn like me into a business Mm -hmm. but finding yourself in your 20s and your 20s are very crappy by the way I can say that as a proud woman in my 30s now (laughs) 20s are hard dang you 20s are Girl, thank you. <laughs> 20s are hard, but finding yourself in the midst of all of that is very difficult. So when you have people around you that can really pour into you, right. it's very important. Mm-hmm. So I took their words and I just started to discover who I was as a woman. Like not as mom, not as wife, but just as Brandy. Mm-hmm. And what I realized is... I love to care for people. I'm a nurturer. And I wanted to give the world something that was like a little piece of me, but it's also right. like healing, right? Mm-hmm. So that's when I came up with Vibe Kit, which is my CBD company. Oh. 
Yeah. So if y'all are on your computer or even on your phone, go and yes. check it out. V Y B E K I T dot com. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how like the process of you starting it, like you went to Square. Is it weird for me to call him Square? Not at all. It, I do you call him Damien? Yes. You, okay. <laughs> Obviously you're not gonna call I'm your always husband. like, Yeah, we're the squares and then like how do you spell it? Just like the shape. You're like We're the squares. Like, did, did I never I thought my last wrong? name was truly gonna be Square, but here I am today. <laughs> so you you go to him and you're like I want to start this company. Uh So how did it all start? Because you realize like, this is like what I want to do. Yeah. So we've been talking about it for a while. You know, it was always, I went to school for broadcast communications. Right. And I didn't get to necessarily go for it because I had a kid and then my husband was in the NFL. So things got a little bit difficult. Things got difficult. So I kind of lost my way in the process. Right. And we were talking about like, okay, well, yeah, maybe you do need a job. Maybe you do need something that's not in the household that can fulfill you. Mm -hmm. But then you go on like job interviews as a mom and you're like, yeah, I can't work that schedule because my kid and then my man only has like one day off a week. You know, you can't do that. Like I can't work Tuesdays or I definitely can't work Fridays (laughs) after 12. I can't work. And then Saturdays after one. And then Sundays. and so, That's definitely a no-go, yeah. right? And I definitely can't work night times. I can only do morning shift, but it can't be before 9 o'clock. And it like has to be before to 3 o'clock. Well, in Irvine, it was 2 o'clock. So you're just like, it's so hard. It's so hard. To be with somebody who is in the NFL because mm-hmm. you're like, I want to maintain my own independence, but finding a job that's going to allow me to maintain my own independence, but also I can actually spend time with my significant other right. because their schedule is crazy. Mm-hmm. It's just, I feel like it's not even existent. It almost isn't unless you create it yourself. So I had to create my own job. So I go to Damien and I'm like, Hey, um, since we're all into these holistic medicine, mm-hmm. we really like hate using pharmaceuticals. Um, just because of the wear and tear that ultimately it causes on your body, right? I would, I mean, off a podcast, I would love to talk to you about that more because I feel the same way. Yes. Sometimes, especially in their line of work, you can't avoid it. Yes. So, I actually started fulfilling, like, actually forming the company during quarantine because I like chaos, you know? You're like, I'm at home and there's a lot going on, but yeah. I am going to throw yeah. something at myself one more time. I have two kids. They can keep each other entertained. <laughs> You're like, oh, you need mommy? I don't care. Give me another hour. Mommy's not here. I have a video. <laughs> like, I had so many, what, ambushes with them in my, my Zoom calls. <laughs> it's like, hey, your mommy's new friend, huh? <laughs> I don't have a kid, but I do have a dog and a cat. And yeah. they would get into fights and just like, shut, shut up. Yes, shut up. Please shut up. Yes. So, yeah, I had that. And (laughs) right before quarantine, I actually went to a white label convention in Vegas. Okay. Literally, like, the day before the lockdown. (laughs) Damien's like, hey, you're cutting it real close. So, I was supposed to stay, like, two days. I end up staying that one day, and then I had to change my flight. But the flight wasn't until later, so I, like, I snuck off and got a massage. And... (laughs) Thank you, honey. Thank you, baby. (laughs) And then I got on my flight. (laughs) I deserved it. So from that self-care day and everyone else saying, oh, my God, Brandy is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, I started started doing my research and I called the people whose cards I got at the White Label Convention. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting in touch with this lovely girl. I'm telling her my ideas and I'm like, but look, I don't want just any old CBD. Like I'm I'm not trying to have any lawsuits. I'm not trying to have that crap. You know, like I want some good, legit stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I made my own formulas. I talked with their scientist and I made formulas. Let's go with the scientist. Like, uh, can we add a little bit of the, um, (laughs) I don't even know what, I don't even know what chemical. Add some more ashwagandha. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, add a little bit more of that. Add a little more lion's mane in it, you know? <laughs> Don't even know this. But yes, yeah. See, like, it's that herbal life, girl. No pun intended. <laughs> Give me some more. <laughs> so I really wanted to at least have one product for my son. I wanted mm-hmm. to get the whole immune system. Right. So I started talking to them and I was telling them, 
the effects that I want and the benefits that I want from each product. Mm -hmm. And we started just brainstorming different herbs to infuse in the oils, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they were sending me samples. They would just send me different samples and... You're like, more ashagandha. (laughs) Yeah. More of that. (laughs) More of that, please. Thank you. But no, seriously, it was like some of it was... They would send me one with powdered, and they would send me one with the liquid form, and you would have to see which one tastes All this was happening during quarantine. During quarantine. But the cool thing about that was, normally, they would be in school, right? So they wouldn't see the process of starting your own business. But then I have this little girl, and she's definitely watching me. Like, I feel like my son, he's going to love me regardless. Like, mama's boy, you know? Right. But my daughter, she's going to be the one being like... And you're telling me what? Why? You know? She's going to grow up to be this independent, yes. confident, yes. entrepreneurial. Yes. Did I say that right? <laughs> woman. And she's like my mom. I my watched mom. my mom create a right. business yeah. during the worst time during in American history. During the worst time of American history. And that was so rewarding just to see them proud of me. You know? Like, it's oh not all God. about daddy. That's it's about mommy too, you know? And it's like, I mommy, get there's your products. Or, oh, is that what your logo is going to look like? And they literally, like, helped me throughout the whole process. And that was so much fun. That was so much fun. Wow. Right? And Because, I'm, I'm you know, like, my, my logo is an elephant with some little leaves mm-hmm. blowing over. And an elephant has so many meanings, right? Prosperity, good right. luck, roll tide, like, duh. Isaac has an elephant in our house, and I think it's like the elephant of education. Uh-huh. But yeah. very many different meanings. A whole bunch of different meanings, right? Yeah. But so I did that, and just to watch their faces light up, because mommy was doing something like other than taking care of them, you know? Right. It feels good. You're like, mommy's not making a lunch. Make it yourself. Yeah, make it yourself. You have all the Costco pizza. Daddy will make you lunch <laughs> when he gets home from work. <laughs> yes, he will. Like, with that, with that right? smile, uh huh. You might want to go get it yourself, baby. (laughs) (laughs) She already knows the look now. Yeah, she does. Right? She does. They can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches pretty good. You're like, while you're at it, make mom one too. Please. I'm hungry. I've been working all day. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up actually creating three tinctures is what they call like oil drops. I ended up creating um, three tinctures. Mm Mm-hmm. And I say they are quarantine approved because we definitely tried them and they definitely work. Thank you. (laughs) So all together, I have um, a full line of four tinctures, four Mm -hmm. drops, some gummies. And I have heard from a lot of people, you have the best dreams of your life. That is the review. I I had amazing dreams last night. Oh my gosh. And pain cream. I've, I've tasted them. Yeah. I feel like I, t- I think I you tasted You haven't even all. tasted the new ones. The new ones are even better than the ones you had last time. I know where my credit card is going after this. <laughs> but I tasted them and I was like, oh my God, like this doesn't just taste like, because I feel like that's something that you focus on is like mm-hmm. the taste of it. So it doesn't Absolutely. taste, I don't even know what the flavor is like a rooty or like. It's, it's grassy. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to taste like you're grazing on grass. <laughs> The vegans that, might. But. Right. The vegans might. But no, I don't even think the they want to okay. taste grass. Right. right? <laughs> so I focused on, like, the flavor mm-hmm. and the ingredients in it and the right. effects of it. Mm-hmm. And all together, that, combi- that made my drops. That's amazing. Thank and you've, you. I mean, now that you, so you started in quarantine and you've had the company ever, ever since quarantine and you did photo shoots and you were just like, all steam ahead. Babe, hold on. We are going in. You saw him this. working, didn't you? I put him to work that day. Yes. <laughs> she did a photo shoot and it, Square was there. And he was just like, oh, do you want me to hold this? Oh, do you want me to do that? Oh, okay. He How's the lighting? The and then was holding the reflector <laughs> during the photo shoot. He was. If that's not a man that's supportive, I don't right? know what is. That's teamwork, baby. Yeah. That's teamwork. Oh my God. That's amazing. Thank you. I always love when uh, I, I feel like it's so hard when you're moving around and you're you have a husband that has such an a job that's looked up to. I feel like it's sometimes hard to find your own voice and like make a name of yourself. Like, yes, I am married to him, but I'm not 
just NFL wife, yeah. NFL girlfriend. Yeah. That part gets exhausting. Yeah. Like, it's fun and it's cute at first. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, thank you. But, like, even with, like, our foundation, you know? Right. It was still, like... This gets the attention because of him. Mm -hmm. Like, what about me? And I did find myself asking that a lot. Like, okay, but what about me? Right. You know? So doing this has possibly been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I can't say that. (gasps) I don't know what is. I'm, like, emotional tonight. See, I told you. I I, I can bring the vibe. Yeah. I feel like I can tell you anything right now. I'm like, cut the camera. It's like, the vibes. (laughs) And I, I honestly, I feel like you've, like... I, even hearing okay so I've never this is something interesting but I've never heard of like somebody with one of the players I hate saying the word like NFL wife because I feel like people have such a bad stigma of it the even legs like, <laughs> I just feel like people have a bad stigma of it and I never want to be like oh I'm an NFL wife because that's not what I am that's a part of my life yep but it's not who I am but I've never heard of one of the NFL wives going and like hanging out with a bunch of the fans and going to Thunder Alley which Oh, Shout those out to are Thunder. my baby. Shout out to Thunder Valley. Alley. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I've looked up to you in that way. I'm just like, oh, my God. Really? I want to go. Yeah, because I, I always have seen you, well, except for Corona, but I've always seen you, like, going to the games, having fun with all the fans. I'm just like, I'm jealous. Like, I'm sitting in my car. Like, obviously, I love all the girls that, like, uh-huh. I go to the games with and, like, the relationships, friendships, whatever I have. But I feel like it's such a different experience to go and, like, have fun with fans. And you're like, oh, my God, we can watch my man together. Like, this is a fun time. Like, I'm going to text you, like, all the bad things I'm thinking during the game that I can't necessarily say right, to people. Right, right. No, it's so funny because you got, like, Bolt God. Shout out to Bolt God. Shout out to, what, Bolt Punisher. I love them. So you got these fans that dress up mm-hmm. for the games and they go all out. Completely I all I love out, them. Right? <laughs> yeah. And... Because I try to stay one foot in, one foot out, mm-hmm. I don't sit in the family section. I always sit front row, feet propped up, chilling, just having a good time. I got my hot dog, my margarita. No, for real. Like, good to go. That's me. I sit closest to the bar, <laughs> but front and center as the well. The bar at... So or so far, so we Dignity, haven't been to so far yet. It was like they were ha- they had hanging succulents. I was like, does any other stadium have this? Because right, although it was temporary, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> the new stadium was better. The new stadium was is amazing, <laughs> by the way. We've only seen it, you know, as a tour, but I can't wait to sit my butt in those comfy chairs and cheer on my man. I want to get a suite. Those sweets. Oh, let's go in, half and half. half Isaac, half we're more like uh, a third and a third. We need somebody else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like that that is something I'm looking forward to in the next upcoming season once the country gets past Corona. Oh, I'm bringing you. We're going to Thunder Alley. I and, and you don't even need to invite me. Games. It's like I'm going to text you the first day of the first game, and I'm Please like, do. Where are we tailgating? Where are we sitting? I get texts right now because you know some some stadiums allow fans. And they're going to those games, and they're texting me. They're like, hey, are you going? Because we got a spot for you. I was looking at flights last night about going to the Kansas City game. Really? It's $200 round trip. By the way, Kansas City, when you when you go there, the whole air, like, the air just smells like barbecue. It is like is a fat a ba- girl's dream. I was like, is that a bad thing? It's a fat girl's dream. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Grab a beer and I'm But, yeah, like, those – fans like diehard boat club and everyone they really have become our family like mm-hmm. we do because i get to tailgate with them i get to like know know them i get to learn about their lives right i know the husband and the wife i know the kids like you know and they treat- well it's not just the game so it's like also training camp and yeah. like, all of that stuff you're they're, they're at games you're at games it's not like, a, like i sit with them in, oh, the, in the stands the at, fans. at camp it's like they're part of my family yeah like, they li- they have literally watched my kids grow up. They're my biggest supporters for Vibe Kid, you know? And yeah. it's it's so fun because I get to hang out with them and spend time with them during football season. Mm-hmm. And the one time of year that we get to let Damien experience that right. is during our fundraiser. So usually because of COVID, we're not doing it this year. But <sighs> we usually do this thing called Jingle Ball Rock. And we rent out a bowling facility Mm -hmm. and it's just a night of drunkenness and bowling and raffles 
Why and was I not there? It is so fun. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't there. We have some of the fans come up from San Diego. Like, they get a bus. And they drive up from San Diego. They're like, I can't drive because I'm right. going to be drinking. I need right. right. But, like, they're in competition with who's going to be Damien this year. You know? It is Can we do so it virtually like I'm we or something? Right. I was thinking about we. <laughs> yeah, they have we boys. Oh, you went old school with the we. <laughs> oh, God. But Sorry, yeah, guys. Like, I grew up with we, okay? I know. I feel you. We we was some good stuff. Not going to lie. We had bowling. We could just like zoom and bowl, right? We can figure out how to do She's that. Like, mm. We can figure She's it out. Like, no, we'll just wait until next But no, it's so cool because then they're like, I'm the one that gets Brady messed up before the game. <laughs> And it just, I mean, it's, I feel like when I, when I see like the Die Hard Bolt Club and like all of these amazing fans, I don't feel like they're like distant, like, oh, those are the fans. I'm like, they're having fun. Like when I went on the Charger fan cruise, shout out to everybody that went on that. I'm just like, these are amazing people. Like I cannot wait to hang out with them and do stuff. And I feel like they're there after the hard games and they're there oh after the good God. games. Did you see when they had the signs up after um, their first game? Uh-uh. And like when camp was over? No. They sent me pictures. <gasps> they ha- they were out there on the Add corner the with chat. signs. The party. Right? They were on the corner with signs like, good luck this season. We love you. We miss you. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, y'all are better than me. Carson, <laughs> go and get mama to share. Go, go get daddy's big face. We're going to do daddy's big head today. <laughs> Wow. No, and it's so that's, fun. I mean, and then they just become family. They literally become family. Oh. Birthdays, every Sunday we're texting. They know, I mean, yeah, I mean, especially if you're being here for five years. Seven years. Why did, oh, five <laughs> years in five years, or four years four, in Orange County. Yeah, okay. four years in Orange County. Yeah. I told but, you the dates weren't I mean, together after, at this point. I don't freaking know. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was a heavy pour. No, I'm kidding. But after that long, they're like family. You guys know each other, whatever. Yeah. So, next thing before we end the podcast, I want to know. You guys have been married a minute, so I want to know Eight years? one yeah. thing that people would find funny, something that people don't know about Square. What don't they know? Square is a funny dude. He's a funny dude. He is just a no hold back, gonna say it like it is. Like that clip, are you in the bed? <laughs> Classic. Classic. Are you? Are you? Like, but for real though, like, I, I kind of like that headboard though. Right? <laughs> he's just gonna say it how it is. But what's something about him? Okay, well, we found out today that he's a great dancer. Amazing dancer. Do by we have the way. any clips of him dancing? I'm sure the Chargers could find something. I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could. I hope they just roll, like, a montage of him, like. Right? But he's. Like, on the field. He's the best dad. Like, the best dad. He'll get his toes painted. Like, Carson will be painting his toes. And they'll do makeup. And they'll do their whole little dance routine. (laughs) Can we get a picture of him, like, having a tea party? Or with his nails painted? I will find you one. She's about to go home and be like. I will find you one. Carson, go and paint it. Please, and then Pink. he's he's the best coach because like our son plays football, baseball, and basketball. All the sports. All the sports. He he's has just, all the good genes. He's yeah. He's like the little MVP. Right. And he's out there like tired as heck. Just came home from work and he's like, nope, we got to get on it. Like, I'm gonna mold you to be the best person you can possibly be. Right. And he's just, he's great. Like, he teaches uh-huh. me things, and I'm like, God dang you, like. You gotta come and one up me today. I was doing good. Like the kids I liked didn't me today. Need that. I didn't need that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it's like in our house. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> it is oh a my lot gosh. of fun. Well, I've loved getting to know you. Thank you. Over the past few years, and obviously today. Yeah. Because I feel like it's hard to like find time to sit down and actually talk to somebody, especially like games, alcohol, tailgating, like. Yeah. Hard. And we really don't see each other unless we like, hey. I know the guys don't want to see each other because right. they're together 24-7, but yeah. I want to see you. <laughs> well, I mean, now that I know that people come to you when they're upset about something. Come and you on, cook girl. Them food, I should have my, my psychology license at this point. I'm coming over. I'm asking Carson to paint my nails and you're going to make me food. When she I would love to. And Micah will be the perfect gentleman. He'll serve you, too. <laughs> Take it after his dad. He's like, I'm going to be. 
He's, He's like, like, do you, are you okay? You need any water? Can I make you a PB&J? I would love a glass of lemon and cucumber water. Ooh. We can conjure We're that We're doing a for spa you. night. <laughs> we can do that. Anyways, I have loved having you on the podcast. Thank you. So if you guys want to go and find Brandy, you can follow her on Instagram. Go on a vibe kit. Uh-huh. Make some purchases. Uh-huh. I know I'm going to. Please do. So give yourself a little shout out. Okay, you can find me on Instagram at I am King, K I N G, Square, or at Vibe Kid, V Y B E K I T. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon.